All right, so in this video, I'm going to go over some more examples um, using the chain rule. So um, by the end of this video, the goal is, you know, that you'll be super comfortable with this stuff and you're actually going to find it easy. You're probably going to, you know, end up asking your teacher, professor for some more homework problems. So let's get going. So let's look at this one. So we have y equals the, the all this group to third power. So y equals x squared plus one to third power. So remember in chain rule, we have an inside function and our outside function. The outside function is the cubed function. So it's that group to the third power. The inside function is the x squared plus one. So to find our derivative of y with respect to x, find dy dx. Take the derivative of the outside. The derivative of the outside is, you know, just using our power rule, it's going to be three times x squared plus one, all the second power. I know it's tempting kind of to mess around with the inside, but just leave it. Just focus on the outside exponents. Now you multiply this by the derivative of x squared plus one. And the derivative of x squared plus one is just two x. And then so you can simplify this, six x times x squared plus one, all the second power. Simple. On to the next one. All right here we got three x minus two x squared, all the third power. So again, our outside function is that cube function. Oh, that's you know, all the third power. Inside it's a three X minus two X squared. So you want to find the derivative of S, so F prime of X. Let's take the derivative of the outside first, which will be three times three X minus two X squared. We just power it down all the, to all the second power. And then from here, you multiply it by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of three X minus two X squared, which will just be three minus four X. Now, you know, maybe you want to clean this up a little bit, but I don't think your teacher or professor will, you know, want you, won't tell you to expand it because it's just, it's just tedious work. But let's just multiply that by three. So we'll get nine minus 12 X times three X minus two X squared to second power. Oh. Okay, on to the next one. <clears throat> All right, so we have G of T is equal to negative seven all over two T minus three to the second power. Now, um, Remember, like, be um, like, be logical. You know, th think. I guess think whenever you are, you know, doing math. As always, don't just go into some rule because it can save you a lot of trouble. Because initially, you may see, oh, a quotient rule, quotient rule. Like, you know, and I hate quotient rule. I mean, I don't really hate it, but I don't like doing it. I prefer not to do it if you can't. So this is the same as I would rewrite this as negative seven multiplied times multiplied by two t minus three to the negative two power. See then, then you don't got no quotient rule to worry about. All you really have is the derivative of this multiplied by negative seven. So so it's gonna make our lives a lot less tedious. So the derivative of the of g of t, so g prime of t, well we'll have the, our outside function here be the, all that to the negative two. And remember the negative seven is just, a, is just a coefficient. So you just multiply by negative seven. So we'll have negative seven times the derivative of the outside. So times negative two multiplied by two T minus three using the power rule that negative two becomes negative three. So all that's the negative three. So this then multiply by the derivative of two t minus three. And the derivative of two t minus three is just two. And that's it, let's, let's just multiply, let's clean this up. Let's multiply across 14 times two, 28 times two t minus three to negative three. 
and maybe leave the exponent, make the exponent positive. That's usually what how you want your answer. So 28 all over 2t minus 3 to the third power. And that's it. Okay, so I know you're probably like, those are really easy. Let's 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 you know, let's get a little more challenging. So let's so let's let's, um, let's let's turn to this next one. Here we actually have uh, an, an example of where we're gonna need product rule combined with chain rule, because essentially you have like three functions. So let's rewrite this so we can emphasize what they are. So you have the x squared be multiplied by the square root of one minus x squared. And this is, a, this is you know, function within a function. So let me put the x squared in purple. So you have x squared, that's one function. And then you have the square root function, the pink, which is you know to the one half power, that's square root. And then you have that inside function of one minus x squared. So you just have to make sure that when you're taking the derivative, you also apply a product rule. So first, we'll take the so we will take the derivative of x squared multiply by this plus x squared times the derivative of this. So the derivative of x squared is 2x. And again, we just keep the rest of that all the same. Like we, don't, we don't worry about doing anything to, to it. We'll just leave it as one minus x squared all to the one half. And then we add x squared times the derivative of this, of this part here. So we keep the x squared as x squared. Now the derivative of this part will be where you apply the chain rule. So the outside function, the pink, we use you know the power rule. We drop the power one half times the one minus x squared minus one from the exponents to the negative one half. And then all this multiplied by the derivative of the one minus x squared because the one minus x squared is the inside function and the derivative of one minus x squared is just negative two x. And you know, you can get really fancy if you want to combine and rationalize it, but that's not our point here. So let's just, just kind of clean it up a little bit. That's the one half. And here we have minus, this, this, that, that two and that two will cancel. So minus an x cubed over the one minus x squared of the one half. Yeah, usually I'm, um, Teachers or professor will be fine with this answer. Um, they don't want you to waste your time, you know, doing the algebra part. But you know, you can also combine these by, you know, creating common denominators. But that's not the calculus. All right, just a couple more. Okay, so here we got another example where we can make this a little easier to work with if we remember that we can rewrite this as simply like an exponent or like a, like as a product or a power. So this is equivalent to x times all of this a negative one third power. When you remember when you have that three in, the, in that root part, it's just the one third power, but since we're gonna move from the denominator to the top, it'll be x squared plus four to the negative one third power. And now again, like the previous one, yes, you got like a couple, you guys, you got like three functions here. You got the x here, then you got the, um, that whole group to negative one third power, then you have the inside there. So they're gonna use product rule again, combined with chain rule. So we're gonna have the F prime of X will be equal to, we take the derivative of X, which is just one, one times, keep that as, as the same. So one times X squared plus four to negative one third plus then we hold that x 
as a constant, so plus x times the derivative of the outside function here in pink. So we just, again, use the power rule. So times negative one third, you know, and then we keep that x squared plus four on the inside, minus one for that negative one third, so it'll be negative four thirds. And then we multiply this all by the square root, or all by the derivative of x squared plus four. The derivative of x squared plus four is just two x. And then, you know, pretty much done, we just made us just clean this up a little bit. So we have that this will be, it's usually good practice to leave your exponents positive. So that'll be one over x squared plus four to the one third minus two x squared. We got that x here. So minus two x squared in the numerator all over x squared plus four to the four thirds in the bottom. All right, so let's, let's, let's just go through one more. So since make sure we got this down. All right, so here we got uh, like a, looks like we have like a quotient all to the power. So, all that's really going on is let's just recognize that your outside function is that square root function. And that's all the second power. And the inside function is just where you just got to apply the quotient rule. It's not, there's not really a simple way to go get past it. So for some we got we to deal with it. So we're going to have that our derivative of y with respect to x, dy dx, will be equal to, let's take the derivative of the outside, which is just, you know, the power rule. So be two times, keep the inside the same, two times three x minus one over x squared plus three, all to the one, multiplied by the derivative of the inside. Now this is a, remember again, quotient rule. So the, 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 the denominator squared, x squared plus three squared, on top, we're gonna have the derivative of the top multiplied by this. The derivative of three x minus one is just three times x squared plus three. Minus three x minus one times the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of the bottom is just two x. Now, I'm not gonna waste time trying to clean this up because it's really not gonna do much. Maybe you can, you can maybe cube this and you know maybe group this, but it's really not gonna get any cleaner than this. So I'll just leave it like this because this is the important part. So make sure you practice, practice, practice this. 